So now we're going to go ahead and get started with the tutorial itself. Now you'll want to go into the protein folding directory. I'm just going to do a quick PWD, show you where I'm sitting. If you do an LS in this directory, you can see what's going on. We have a PDF and an HTML of the tutorial itself, if you want to take a look at that. Uh, for now, I'm just going to go into the input files directory, do a quick LS. I'll do an LS like that so we can get a better idea of what's going on. You can see there's a lot in this directory already, and essentially we, we already have everything we need to fold T4 lysozyme, which is our test protein, using Rosetta. Now, the tutorial gives instructions on how to obtain everything you need to fold T4 lysozyme, um, but we have all the files here. I'm not going to go through that part of the tutorial. Essentially, what you want, you know, before you start anything else, is your FASTA file. And from your FASTA file, you can obtain your secondary structure prediction, which are these two files, plus these two files. We also have our native file here, which we'll be using for the purposes of comparison. We have a file over here that is just going to describe what the secondary structural residues are, and that's what we're going to use to calculate the RMSD. But perhaps most importantly are the two fragment files over here. Now I can take a look at what these fragment files are, but the one thing that uh, I want to impress upon you is that these files are gigantic. I mean, this protein is only going to be a little over 100 residues, and yet for a 100 residue protein, we can get the size of the file using the command du, and we can see that the three residue fragment files are stored in this uh, file over here, are 5.8 megabytes, and then if we do the same thing for the nine residue fragments, those are 17 megabytes. So if you were to work on a protein that was five times larger, those files would be five times larger as well. And so it doesn't make sense to open them in, for example, a text editor. We can just take a quick look at them from the command line right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, uh, just really quickly see uh, what these look like. Maybe we can look at the first 50 lines or so. And uh, what this file has is essentially just the backbone dihedral angles for a stretch of residues in a protein that matches or is similar to a stretch of residues in our protein, T4 lysozyme. Of course, this is the beginning of the file, so it's gonna start with residue one through three. And, uh, and this first fragment over here comes from PDB2OQO chain A. These residues with this identity and this secondary structural arrangement. And then these are the phi, psi, and omega angles of that fragment. And so when you do a fragment insertion, what you're really doing is changing the backbone dihedral angles of a stretch of residues to match the values that are in this file. Now, if you look, of course, at the nine residue fragments, it's going to be exactly the same, only you're going to do nine residues at a time. Now, uh, I'm just going to go through the process of getting fragments using the Robetta server. This is something that's relatively easy to do, and you can do it if you have an academic license. So I'll go ahead and uh, show you how to do that. You just want to go to old.robetta.org, and then go to Fragment Libraries, Submit button over here. And you just provide your email address, the target name, and then the FASTA sequence for your protein. If you're doing benchmarking, the one thing I would like to stress is that this is going to pull fragments from a database of proteins, and if you know the structure of your protein, probably your protein is part of that database, right? And so you, you're going to be cheating if you generate fragments from the actual experimental structure of the protein that you're trying to predict. So to avoid that, you just check this box over here, exclude homologs, and you provide the PDB identifier uh, in this box over here. And then you just hit submit, and then it'll email you when the job is done. You can pull up your job by going to the queue up here in the top left, and then it has a list of all the jobs that uh, are either queued up or running or have been completed. And then I'm just going to click on a random one over here. You go to downloads and you have all of the files over here. 
Now everything from this directory that could be useful is already in this input files directory that's available to you. So you don't need to do this, right? Just go ahead and use the contents of this directory to do what you have to do. And uh, you can use the Robetta server for your own uh, test case. So we're just gonna move right along and run this protocol. So this is how you execute your ab initio run. As I mentioned, all of the options are already in this options file, which is called 2lzmbroker.options. And what this is going to do is it'll allow you to not have to type in all the options every time you wanna run this job, right? Everything will be included in the options file, but it is equivalent to typing everything into the command line. So I'll go ahead and hit enter, and I'll go ahead and start doing the prediction, which should take between five and 10 minutes. So Abinitio Relax just finished. If you do an LS in your directory now, you'll find that there are two new uh, files in your directory. One is this uh, score file over here, score.fsc, and then one is the output file that has the protein itself. Now you can take a look at the score file just really quickly. And in general, Rosetta is going to tell you each component in the score function that it uses, what the value is for your particular model. In general, we're only interested in the total score, which is the second column over here, and is this number for the model we generated. And if we're doing this for benchmarking, then we're interested in the RMSD as well, which is provided here. I did mention that we're computing the RMSD specifically for uh, secondary structural residues, um, which are included in the core file that's in this uh, directory. And you can find that value over here. So we have an RMSD of one over secondary structural residues and an RMSD of 4.2 over all residues. Now this took 246 seconds to complete this protocol. So you can imagine that if you're trying to fold 100 or 1,000 structural models, that it can take quite a while. So in the interest of time, we've gone ahead and provided you with a few hundred structural models that were generated already. And you can access them by going to output files, sample data, and you'll find them over here. Now, uh, if you actually look at this file, first of all, let's take a look at how large it is. And it's quite large. And if you look at uh, the contents of the file, you can see that you have, again, score terms, right? So we, here we have one model, and then we have the score for that model. And then after that, we have contents that are describing the actual structure of the model. And they're not, dis they're not displaying the information in a way that you know, is human readable. You or I cannot make sense of this. So uh, what we're going to do instead is we're going to just let Rosetta manage the structural information and we're going to very quickly work with the variables that are available to us in this uh, scoring component. So, so what we can do is uh, just work with that by using this Python script that's included in the tutorial. Here I've written out the command to just isolate the two variables that we're interested in, which is the RMSD of the secondary structural elements, right, the residues and helices, as well as the total score of the, of the uh, models in this file. Go ahead and hit enter, run an ls again, and you'll see that there's now a file called 2lzmmodels.table, and then we can just take a look at what that file looks like. And you can see that essentially we've stripped away all of the structural information, and we've also stripped away all of that information in the scores that we weren't interested in, right? So here we have the uh, unique identifier for each structure. We have the RMSD for the core residues, the secondary structural residues, and then we have the total score. Now to make our lives easier, we can just go ahead and sort this. We can type in, you know, using the sort command. And uh, if you just hit enter, then it'll just output the contents of the uh, sorted file, but it won't actually save it. So to save it, we'll just go ahead and, and then now when, we, uh, now when we cat this, we'll see that the third column, the score, has been sorted from lowest to highest. Now we're interested in this file up here, right? But it's trapped somewhere 
in this file over here. So how do we get it out? And also, how do we get it into a format that is useful for a human being, right? The structural information itself is, is in a Rosetta format, and now we wanted something like a PDB, right? Something we can open in PyMall. So to get that structural model, we can just use an application called ScourgeAD2. It's also useful for, uh, of course, rescoring structural models. Um, but here we're not actually interested in rescoring it. What we're interested in doing is isolating the PDB from this output file, this Rosetta file. So this is the command that I'm going to be running. Basically, we're running an application scorejd2, which is also included in Rosetta. We're providing the silent file that we were given. We're providing the tag that belongs to this model, right, that we got way up here. And so this way, it's only going to extract this one model from the silent file. If you don't provide this option, everything is extracted. We're also going to specify that this is a full atom model and that we want a full atom PDB. And then here we're saying we want a PDB. Hit enter. Now we run an LS again, and we have our PDB. And we also have a score file, which we're going to go ahead and ignore. Now I mentioned in the tutorial that you may not always have a native structure, right? You may not know what your protein structure looks like. But it's still useful to get an RMSD from the lowest scoring model to evaluate the extent to which your models have converged upon a single energetic minimum, right? If your models that score well all have low RMSDs to the lowest scoring model, then that would suggest that that model and that pool of models represents a native-like state. Whereas if the RMSDs are all over the place, then perhaps you have not converged and you shouldn't really trust any of these models. So we're gonna go ahead and recalculate the RMSD of our models to this low scoring model, okay? And we can again use scorejd2 to do that. So here's the command I'll type in to rescore and recalculate all of our models against the lowest scoring model. So this command is gonna be very similar to the one we ran originally, except now what we're going to do, we're going to include this flag over here. So what this is going to say is I want you to evaluate the RMSD of each model and compare it to this specific PDB, right? And then use this to distinguish it from just the uh, RMSD values we had before, right? And then this is the series of residues that are going to specify which residues we're gonna be using to calculate the RMSD. Go ahead and hit enter, and then we're gonna go ahead and rescore everything. Shouldn't take too long. And if we once again run the same command that we had before, Right, so here's the command that we had before. I'm just gonna go ahead and change the precise uh, RMSD column because we had a different name for it this time. And then I'm going to change the name of the output table so we don't overwrite the one we had before. So now we have, now we have a table that is going to be generated with this name here. And then we can go ahead and sort and we can see uh, the top scoring models. Now, not surprisingly, since we are calculating the RMSD to the lowest scoring model, uh, it does make sense that the RMSD of the lowest scoring model to itself is going to be zero, right? But then the ones that come after that all tend to have these pretty low values, right? 1.8, 1.8, 1.5. And so that would indicate that probably there is an element of convergence here and we have in fact converged upon the right structure. Now you can verify this in this case, right? Because we have the RMSD values for the native. But if you didn't have the RMSD values for the native, this would still be helpful in telling you that there is some confidence in, in these models and the fact that they all score well and are all kind of similar to each other. You can do something more exhaustive perhaps where you take the RMSD of all these models to each other. But I think in this case, it's sufficient to just use this one RMSD value to come to that conclusion. So there's more to this tutorial. There's a, a part where you can fold proteins using constraints, and uh, there's even a part where you can fold membrane proteins. But for now, I'm just gonna sign off and leave you here. Uh, I would encourage you to all go through the portion where you fold proteins with constraints because that's gonna be a situation perhaps that you'll be faced with more likely than just doing it blind like this. 
So I wish you all good luck. And if you have any questions about this tutorial, feel free to contact me. I've linked my email at the beginning of the presentation. And so you're more than welcome to reach out and ask me any questions you have.